What's up my producer friends, I'm David with anothermonsterproductions.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to make synth brass sounds inside citrus. It's going to sound like this. So Citrus is a stock FL Studio plugin. It comes with all versions of FL Studio from the producer edition onward. So as long as you have at least the producer edition of FL Studio, you're going to be able to follow along with everything in this tutorial. Also, I am going to be including this preset as a free download in the description of this video. You may have noticed in the intro that there's actually two, two slightly different variations of this brass synth. And if you get the preset, the first one, if you go into your filter tab, it's going to be this where it's set to X2 and it's going to sound like this. And then we can change that sound slightly by going to the Alt X2. So it just gives us a little bit of different flexibility there. And during the tutorial, I'll talk about some other things that we can do to tweak this sound, make it a little bit different or unique and make it your own. So the first thing that I want to do when I have Citrus loaded up is go up here to our plugin options. We're going to click this. We're going to go to presets and we're going to go to default. This is just going to get us a default preset blank slate. It's a sine wave. It's going to sound like this. And the next thing that I want to do is where you actually see this sine wave shape. I'm going to right click this. We're going to go to saw and this is giving us a sawtooth wave, which should sound like this. Okay. And the next thing that I want to do is right here, our ratio. I'm going to go ahead and bring this down to one. So that's just bringing it down an octave. Now let's go ahead and go into our main tab here, right here where it says ORD. This is the amount of voices. I'm going to bring this up to three. So it's making our sawtooth a little bit more spread out, turning it into a super saw, which it's kind of a weird sounding super saw right now, but I'm actually going to leave all these settings the same here. And the other thing that I can do while I'm in this tab is down here under quality, you'll notice we have a render mode where it's set to high quality envelope and oversampling is eight times. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this on the draft mode too. This just means that we're gonna be actually hearing it the same as when it's rendered. That way I know that, you know, when it, whenever this sound is actually rendered out to audio, uh, that it's gonna sound the same as what I'm hearing now. Anyway, the next step that I wanna do here is route this through a filter. And how we do that in Citrus is through the matrix. So up here where we have our initial sound going out, I'm gonna go ahead and hit Alt and then click on that to just set it to the off position. So now nothing should be happening. No sounds coming out. I'm gonna go down here to F1, which is our filter one, and I'm gonna bring the out volume out all the way 100% up there. Still nothing, so now operator one, I can go ahead and turn the volume up here. And now we have our sawtooth wave, which is going through our filter one. So now I can go to our filter type and I can bring this down to LP, which is a low pass filter, and I can set this to X2. So these are all have to do with different slopes, and you may want to experiment with different, different slopes and different filter types too. There's actually another uh, filter type, LP2, which you may want to experiment with. All of these things are gonna slightly change the tone and just the overall sound of this brass synth that we're going for. So it may be worth spending a little bit of time messing with that. As I mentioned in the intro here, I found that two, the X2 and Alt X2 are my two personal favorites as far as this kind of sound that I was going for. So anyway, that's gonna sound like this. And so our cutoff knob is gonna control how many frequencies are actually being filtered out. So down here, more frequencies are being filtered out. And then less frequencies as we go up. So I can go ahead and set this to like 10%. And what I'm gonna do here is go into my cutoff, which is linked to the cutoff knob here, and then make sure you're in your envelope. I'm gonna enable this envelope and I'm gonna create a shape uh, which should hopefully give it sort of like a stabby brass sound. Uh, it's gonna be kind of like this maybe bring this out just a little bit, bring that up a little bit, bring this up maybe a little bit like that. Okay, so that's pretty good. And you may notice that as I release it, there's this weird sort of like artifact at the, at the end of that. So what I'm gonna do to kind of get rid of that is go into my volume tab and I'm gonna enable this one. Again, I'm in my envelope section and I'm just gonna basically make the same shape here. I'm gonna bring this in just maybe a little bit tighter there. Okay, so I think that solves that issue there. 
Okay, so now our envelope knob here controls kind of the dry wet of how much of the envelope is going into the filter. So, so this is like less. So we can mess with this. I'm gonna bring this to about 65%. And that gives us a little bit more high end on that brassy sound. Now we may want to go in here and mess with this. This is really it's completely up to you. And you can do it on the volume knob here as well. So that might be worth experimenting with as well. The next thing that I want to do here is actually give this sound a little bit of wobble. It just sounds very uh, digital right now. And how I'm going to do this is go back into my operator one. This is our pitch envelope. So if I go into my pitch tab, this is linked to this knob when we're in our envelope. Uh, I'm actually going to go to LFO and I can enable this. I'm going to get rid of these. And then I can bring this up like that. And then let's take a listen. Okay, so it, that's a lot, obviously. So I can bring this down to like nine cents. We could try 15 cents. Let's try 15 cents. So now we have this kind of drifting in and out of tune. Uh, if we wanted to, we could link it to the tempo. I think I'll actually want to bring that down to like eight cents or nine cents. So now you can barely even notice that it's there, but it's just a little bit of extra imperfection in the sound. Which just gives it a little bit more character, makes it sound a little bit more analogy. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do here is add some effects. By default, when we start adding effects, it brings in a chorus effect, which is good. We want this to be a little bit wider. I'm going to bring the effects up to 85% here. <laughs> And you can immediately hear the width and it just fills out the sound a little bit, makes it sound a little bit better. So that's definitely sounding nicer. We can go ahead and go into our effects tab here. You can see that it's set to four voices by default and that's fine. I'm just gonna leave the chorus as is default settings. I'm gonna go over here to our reverb and turn this on. I'm gonna change the color to warm, so W. <laughs> And that's a little bit much, so I'm going to bring the volume down here to about 9%. So just a little tiny bit of reverb there, just to add a little bit more character. And then I'm also going to do the same thing here with the uh, delay. So I'm on delay 3, I'm going to turn this on, go ahead and put it to ping pong mode. I'm going to bring the volume down to about the same thing, 9%. <laughs> So you can hear just a little bit of that. Uh, and then I can bring this up. This is the stereo offset. We can bring that to like about seven or eight milliseconds. So it just adds a little bit more character there. And so I'm pretty happy with the way that sounds. I think it sounds pretty decent. Uh, again, you know, we can go back into our filter section. As I mentioned earlier, you can mess with different slopes. Uh, we can also mess with all of these things that I sort of touched on earlier in the tutorial, but that's the sound in a nutshell. Uh, be sure to download the preset if you want it, link in the description. Share the video if you liked it, comment for the YouTube algorithm, hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Let's roll the outro. Thanks for watching the video guys. If you liked it, be sure to hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Don't forget to hit the bell notification. That's gonna let you know anytime I release videos in the future. Right now I'm doing tutorials about once a week and those usually come out on Friday or Saturday. So keep an eye out for that. If you have any questions about anything or tutorial requests, feel free to hit me up on Instagram at anothermonster1. Also, if you feel like you're really struggling with music production, sound design, anything in between, and you feel like you just need a little bit of extra help, I am doing one 
one-on-one -on -one private lessons, which you can sign up for on my website at anothermonsterproductions.com. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description of this video if you guys want to sign up for that. And while you're there, be sure to take advantage of the free stuff I'm giving away in the description of this video as well. I've got a sample pack and an ebook, which you can download for free. You just need to enter your email address and I'll send that stuff over to you. And as always, I will see you in the next video.